Hey, what's up guys, it's Fish here, and welcome back to some Warhammer Total War. It's been a little while since I last uploaded a battle on Total War Warhammer, so if you do enjoy this and want to see more, then do make sure to drop a like and a comment on the video. It lets me know that you guys want to see more of this type of content, and it also helps get the video out there to more people. So in today's video, we have a 4v3 green skin versus dwarf battle. We are going back to the old school style, now, as it's been a little while, so I thought I'd go back to the old classico of orc vs greenskin this is also taken from my discord as well so if you want to be a part of these battles then make sure to go join my discord down below on these custom maps so the custom map is the thunderfalls and the other mods we are using are the glory mods along with a magic mod as well which should hopefully make this battle very very interesting let's jump into it without further ado we'll quickly look at the map so you can see that we have about four three river crossings and a mountain crossing as well we kind of have a crossing right here and the orcs obviously have their own form of it right there they also have a small set of bridges right here where the orcs can move across and the dwarfs have a much larger one as well there's also a uh, river crossing right here which both sides share so i'm expecting plenty of fighting to occur in all of these rivers hopefully the thunder falls will be turned red with the blood of the enemy but then this map also has a side passage through the mountains through these giant like kind of like swamp lands i guess and then around here so it's gonna be really fun to see how this battle plays out with all these different river crossings i think in total there are four on the map including this kind of mountain pass as well this is really nice you know one minute we're fighting outside another minute we're fighting inside it's a really cool way of uh, mixing it up so we'll run through the army comps now as well i just want to quickly show you guys where units are on the map and i will also make sure to stick them up on your screen so you can get an overall view in case i miss any units so on this extreme left flank we have some long beards with great weapons along with some of these uh, elder warriors this is a custom unit for the glory mod and they are supported by some royal guard again looking beautiful right there they've got some spares back there he also has some cannons and a grudge for her uh, along with that in the other kind of i guess the other main bridge river crossing we have some grumbling guard i believe have a grumbling guard then we also have more elders and royal guards along with grudge throwers and some gyrocopters as well so it's gonna be cool to see what the gyrocopters do in the battle we continue on to i guess this is like the main body we've kind of got a right defense and the center defense right here so on the front line we're gonna have long beards supported by quarrelers with fire bolts again another glory mod unit then we also have some iron drake halberds these guys just look sick look at them they might not be very law appropriate but they still look sick nonetheless no one can deny that then we have some peak gate guard one of my favorite regiments of renowned uh, along with some more elder warriors and we obviously have belagar as well leading the forces then if we look on this right part of the side of the army we have some flame cannons along with some iron breakers some quarrelers with fire bolts we also have some charge breakers i believe these are basically just like long beards but with guns as well so they're going to be obviously hitting the enemy hard and then we have a line of peak gate guard and royal guard along with some more long beards so a pretty sturdy army there from the dwarfs we go look at the green skin roster we can see that we have a whole line of night goblins leading the charge forward they're going to be the sacrificial lambs as they push forward then we have two giants along with some orc boys and also a set of orc edge end great bows i guess this is like a elite unit of archers cool to see what they can do then we also have some orc arrow boys as well the orc arrow boys have a sword i swear we didn't have this in the default uh default warhammer like they, didn't have, they just had a bow not a sword uh in their other hand but maybe i am mistaken on this mountain pass army we can see we have some wolf riders and some squigs making up the initial vanguard of the army pushing forward and we have some more wolf riders then we have a night goblin shaman along with some more night gobos right there all with golden experience as well um, and if you want to find out all the rules because i know there are a few rules with like unit caps and stuff in this battle and i'll make sure to leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check that out then we have scar snake we also have a hammer of gork it's gonna be interesting to see if they want to push that round and we also wow look at this unit this unit is fucking sick they have like uh, almost like lances that is awesome these guys are uh, really really cool and we also have an arachnarok as well then we'll quickly move over here just to see the right hand side we can see we have more goblins on the front line a pretty much a very very nice artillery battery here just with some goblin rock lobbers they are supported by some gobbo long uh, legion bows 
These guys look cool as well. Very nice addition to Maguri mod. We also have the Rusty Arrow Boys uh, along with some of these guys. This unit right... Oh, these are... This is actually a different unit. The Gobbo Centurions right here with two swords. That is sick. That makes the Gobbos look awesome. The more Orc Boys. And we also actually have uh, Azag. And we also have just a normal Great Wyvern. And then we have the meat of the Goblin Army with Black Orcs back here. And they are supported by some Orc Figgins as well. So I probably missed a few units. But oh well, you guys have seen my army comp. So let's just get this battle started. And I guess the battle will start off with these Dwarves moving forward. They're going to be trying to form up onto the river crossing. However, the artillery is going to come in. This is going to be painful. Oh, what an awesome artillery barrage right there. Absolutely smashing the Dwarven defenders. However, they are going to get their artillery to fire back, I imagine, very soon. However, they do only have a set of four, uh, four catapults. So the, uh, the goblin artillery is just going to come pounding in and once again smashing the front line. This is going to be a brutal engagement for the allies right now of the Dwarven forces. And I imagine if they're not too careful, they're going to be getting hit pretty hard from the artillery over there. We also saw another ton of artillery. Oh, the Longbeards are just getting destroyed. What are they getting destroyed from? Just these, uh, these rock lovers back here? Yeah, the, the rock lovers are just doing so much damage. However, the front line is going to kick off now as we have the goblins moving forward. The giants are going to be hitting hard against the, uh, the the ethereal fame who should be able to kill this giant you know without too much hurt also we also have a lot of the artillery fire and the, the iron drakes as well coming in doing plenty of damage onto this giant you can already see he's down to two-thirds health which is not too great and he's going to be getting focused down and just surrounded however this is a perfect target right now for the uh, for the artillery just to start hitting these expensive units in the Iron Breakers. Another giant comes flying in here. Again, this giant is just going to be able to destroy you so much damage. We do actually have a Gyro Bomber as well, who I imagine is going to be dropping some explosives onto these Orc boys. Uh, not dropping its load quite. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it just dropped its load right there. <laughs> it drops its load and just killed so many of these Orc boys. Very nice. You can already see the river is starting to turn red. We have some of the Savage Orc Boar Riders coming in. Charging into the Iron Drake Halberds. The Iron Drake Halberds should be okay. Lots of buffs coming off onto the dwarfs right now. We have a rune of oath and steel coming down. This is going to be helping them out. And one of the giants is already going down. However, a huge foot of Gort going off, sending a lot of these quarrelers with firebolts back. However, they've kind of almost done their damage right now. We do have. Oh no, this is so nice here. For the Savage Orc boys. If they can get through onto this back line and start harassing the artillery, that'd be huge. But the flame cannons and the organ guns are just opening up now on that line, sending them back. You can see that giant going down very, very soon. But the artillery is still coming in. This battle is so goddamn hectic already. And it has only just kicked off. The artillery is still going back and forth, back and forth. We can see that the initial forces are starting to make their way round in the far left-hand side. And how are, the, how are the dwarfs doing on this side? They're still just chilling. They've got some organ guns shooting away at the wolf riders, I would imagine. They're getting some good shots off there using their ammunition up. And they also obviously have these, uh, these grudge throwers as well. So the artillery is doing pretty well as the artillery for these guys are still just having to be pushed up. Yeah, you can see their batteries are slowly making their way up. We go back to the river. We can see that the dwarfs actually pushed directly forward. They want blood. They want to take out this giant whilst they still can. They do open themselves up to some, uh, some artillery fire. Obviously clumping up their troops like this. They are pushing forward. The dwarfs are rallying. Oh, what a huge hit there from the artillery. They're sending that giant back to whence it came is awesome. They're, both of the giants are pretty much dead. They need maybe one or two final blows. There's again a huge hit from the artillery. These dwarfs are done. Done sitting around. They're just going to be pushing forward. Oh my god, the rocks though. It's going to be very interesting to see how many kills these guys get. The elite archers from the orcs are now shooting. But it looks like they, they shoot like bolt throwers right there. The iron drakes are going to flame on though and start burning uh, uh, burning them. Oh, a beautiful foot of gork right there going directly down, followed by the artillery. But it's just going to destroy everything that 
the dwarves hold dear in that river crossing and their numbers are definitely dropping down they obviously still have plenty of units left but this charge across the river crossing is going to be dangerous they don't really have a lot of force left in it now but again it's not like the orcs have a lot of soldiers here either now they are still very very low if these giants go down they kill this unit of black orcs they or the orc legends legends i mean what the hell i've only just got that i was like yeah the legends you know i've only just got that it means legends that is hilarious and you can see them i actually missed these guys when i was running through the army comps the orc legends that is so cool <laughs> the orcs are an awesome awesome faction as the giant continues to harass the front lines oh what a nice hit right there I mean, again, yeah, this assault is pretty much, you know, over. The dwarves have, yeah, they're going, they're pushing up more forces. They've actually pushed up this, uh, this flame cannon as well to help them out. That's very, very nice. However, there's not really huge targets for them to hit, in fairness. Artillery is still harassing on this left flank. So this was kind of like the initial assault. And then I, I think that this assault over on this left-hand side, and then this assault over here in the mountain, they're going to kind of occur at the same time. Obviously, the dwarves were outnumbered as well, three to one, uh, three to four. So they uh, they de they definitely didn't have the advantage to begin with. Because even with this one army almost being killed right now, the the orcs definitely still have the the advantage. The iron drake so coming up big. We did just see a pretty big artillery hit back there. The grudge throwers and the gobblobbers are definitely causing a, a nuisance for both sides. As the Iron Drakes continue just to burn away, chip away at these HP. We got some more legends. We do have some more, some more legends right here charging into the Iron Drakes. If these legends can get a charge in on these Iron Drakes, that's going to be huge. Killing off this unit, which is so expensive and can do so much damage. And just getting rid of it off the field of battle, it would be awesome. And that's exactly what they are going to do. Some of them actually getting burned away. Loads of them getting killed before they can even get this charge in. They're going to be standing back up, but we do have a unit of the AP, uh, the AP guard. I mean, the, the P gate guard coming forward. And they're going to be charging in to try and support these Iron Drakes and, get, Iron Drakes and give them time to get out. The engagement over here has occurred already. However, the Orc boys look like they've been sent back with the sheer amount of artillery coming in. We do have some spells popping in. Yeah, I think this is a Vortex spell. Along with the artillery opening up on this line, has definitely done a load of damage on whittling these guys down. And that's going to give them a good help at, uh, at actually just making this crossing a little bit easier. Because if, if they are struggling, this organ gun and the grudge thrower as well has just been destroying these weaker orc boys. But that's kind of good. It, they're, they're almost out of ammunition, so that's going to give them an easier job of it when they do want to push forward. Oh my god, how are you, how are you ever going to get through this line right here? This is just a thick-ass line of dwarves. There's no way that that's going to be broken. I, I would be... I would eat my hat if I see this line get broken. I really don't see it occurring. We've got the Siege Breakers. We've got a foot of Gork coming down over there in the distance. The Quarrelers are all shooting overhead, taking out quite a few of these Squigs. Oh, yeah, I want to see what the Squigs look like, the proper ones. The ones with all armor and stuff. Iron Breakers got all oh, these Squigs. Do not stand a chance. However, they are going to do a perfect... That charge was... Very, very deadly. And we're about to see another one coming in over here as well. They actually indent the Dwarven line pretty heavily off that charge. They are going to be routed. I think we're going to see them routing very, very soon. And more explosions coming off. Pretty much just wiping them off the map. So, you know, that Dwarven line is going to be holding. They've got artillery coming around to help them out. As they continue to push around. But this can be extremely risky. The Dwarven players have committed very, very heavily to this, this kind of uh, crossing the bridge and trying to smash this army. But if they fail here, which I don't know, they could definitely fail. I think the Dwarves are going to win. But if they were to fail here, they'd leave their flank completely open on that river crossing and that, uh, and that other mountain pass. The Royal Guard, though, are going to be pushing in. And these guys are going to be surrounding the Legends right here with great bows and taking them down. We also obviously have Belagar as well. Belagar is one of my favorite legendary lords for the Dwarfs, I think. And he's going to be turning around and probably just taking out Grimgore when he gets the chance to. Because all these artillery pieces are just retreating back, trying to get out of there. And the fighting over on this right flank as well is still trying to push across here. The Orc Biggins are making their way across the river crossing, but... It's definitely hard work for these guys. I don't think I've seen a single... Yeah, they haven't even got to the front line yet. 
of the dwarfs. The artillery is definitely ruining the back line. I just need some infantry to push forward. This organ gun is... How many kills is the organ gun on? Only on 180, uh, 68. I thought it would be on more because it sent back a lot of these units uh, back into the abyss. The rest of the Yorks are just sitting back, I guess, using their artillery to their advantage, waiting for the rest of the reinforcements to come up. And the main engagement is going to be occurring over here as more forces just look to be breaking upon this, this stone of a, of a line right now. This is, this is like... Is this all you've got, Sauron? Doesn't look like the, the orcs are going to be able to break this line. However, they are now using the artillery, and that's going to be the pain. Oh, yes, look at these guys. These night goblins pushing up. They look so sick. They look really cool. And the squigs are going to be pushing in as well. The artillery, having this artillery piece up here is going to be huge, I think, in this battle. Because the dwarves have clumped up so much that this, this rock lobber can literally just do so, so much damage. We do have an arachnid rock making its way up here as well. And this rock lobber is just going to still be shooting. And look how clumped up they are. So it's going to be firing some targets. Luckily, that one missed just hitting an organ gun. I would rather be focusing down this infantry line, I think, if I was the orc player. Well, we get to see what these night goblins are made of. They, they're just like, these are like the really wealthy night goblins who are just like buying everything, even though they can't really use it. They seem like they're pretty strong, though, hitting in the front lines. And the archer fire as well is definitely finding the weak points in the armor. But over here, yeah, the dwarves have managed to win this. They can either make the decision to fall back and try and hold the, the front line here. They can either decide to go through the mountain pass and come up behind them. Or try and come around here and try and support these guys over here. Uh, they, but it looks like the, the fight has happened. We do have... Oh, we have some Chaos Dwarfs. There. It was a Mountain Ogre. Oh, that's really cool. I missed quite a few units in the intro. I do apologize. But you guys would have seen the army comes anyway. The Mountain Ogre is getting in here. That's very cool. And they are destroying the front line. Luckily, the Great Elders are here and i think the great elders have anti-large we also do have some drag uh, some demon slayers as well which are going to be doing great amounts of damage against these against these mountain ogres i wonder if we'll ever see the mountain ogre, or we'll see the ogre kingdom in the as a dlc faction i'm sure we will uh, at some point in the future maybe game three maybe they are an old friend who knows but i imagine that the old friend is maybe going to be the chaos force but then again, I think game three is going to be all about chaos. So we're going to be getting like the chaos dwarfs then. And we'll probably get the, the, the ogre kingdom as well in that as we have the wyvern moving down. I think this far left flank is going to be broken by the orcs. So this battle can literally go either way right now. If yeah, the orcs are overwhelming this position. And I imagine these guys are going to have to reform up getting ready to, to fight them. I think the dwarfs feel like they've got this far right flank under control. Even though it is a pretty messy fight right now. As they are deciding to move all their troops over to this far left flank. We'll get in nice, close and personal. And we'll watch this fight for a little while. As everyone else gets into position on the other side. Oh, is that Arachnorok routing? The Arachnorok is routing. That's pretty big news. However, we do have these awesome looking night goblins pushing in. They just look so cool. They really do. I love the look of them. And they have actually broken the central line, but I think this line was opened up so that the artillery could shoot away at the larger creatures. We also have a gyro bomber as well getting stuck in. Some oaths being popped. This Scar Scarsnick is here as well. So I imagine he's going to be popping off some buffs of his own, trying to support his men. Yeah, he's popped the walk to help his men out. The dwarves are extremely tired, but they are still holding. And they've actually managed to win this far right flank fairly convincingly. Even though the band's power is not in their favor, they're just going to come around here and just surround the rest of the units. Killing Skarsnik is going to be catastrophic for this right flank. And that's probably going to route a lot of the archers straight off the bat. As you can see, they actually already are routing as we have more dwarfs moving in here to support their brothers holding the line. The gyro bomber did go down, as we can see it smoking. Oh, that's a, is that friendly fire right there or what from the organ gun? I'm not sure. I saw plenty of dwarfs there being destroyed. I'm also not sure what this flame cannon is doing right here. Artillery coming in. Again, huge hits off there on the on the, on the the originals of Renown. We do, uh, however, have the siege breaker. Do these guys have, like, pump action shotguns? Do these guys have, like, pump action shotguns? What the hell? I need to be finding a good target right here. I think it's itchy nuisance being popped off on these guys. Oh, no. Gork picks them being popped off destroying the morale and the armor of these guys but yeah this this far right flank has been completely gone 
Ooh, we have a we have a dwarven general right here. The dwarfs have decided to push across this mountain. A big, pretty big vortex spell coming off. Uh, the dwarfs have decided to push across the bridge and actually start fighting the centurion gobos. I guess we have the support of Belagar who is making his way round. Belagar can make his way round and they form up a united front. I think the dwarfs definitely have a great advantage. The wyvern moving in the background. Yeah, we go. This wyvern is going to go directly down onto these guys, I would imagine. Or the Azag, sorry. Azag is Azag surely going to come after these archers, no? Or is he looking to move and make his way over here? Yeah, they've kind of messed up their forces a little bit. But they are starting to commit some soldiers over to this fight. You can see that a few of these guys are already starting to make their way over. I think the artillery is starting to push over a little bit to go ahead and help these guys out. Oh no, they're going after the gyrocopters. Gyrocopters need to get the hell out of there as the dwarves continue to slug their way forward. If you insist. We do have some of the orc legends with great hacks again, such an awesome unit. They're, they're fighting Belagar right now. Belagar is surrounded. Is he gonna, he's going to get back up, right? Yeah, Belagar is going to get back up. However, he needs to be very, very careful. We have some uh, pretty awesome units here looking from the orc players. And there's still 10 minutes left of this battle. No, has Belagar been killed? Belagar's been slain. Oh, no, Belagar's still uh, pretty healthy. Sorry, I couldn't see him there because of, uh, cause of uh, that, that pillar right there. This battle, yeah, this battle is not looking good for the dwarves. They can clean up this fight right here, form up, and reform up all their forces elsewhere because they've won this battle right here. They just don't have much infantry left. They need to get this artillery, if they can, over to fight on this side because they're about to get charged in here around the back. The quarrelers do not stand a chance as the squigs push on. Oh, that was, that was disgusting. The squigs just run through the infantry lines like they are literally nothing. The last couple units of these brave dwarfs are just fighting hard, but they are going to be getting routed. The Royal Guard are fighting hard. They're going to be doing decent amount, decent amount of damage, but I think the Orcs maybe just have too much in this battle. I still think it could literally go either way, as the dwarfs do still have some pretty sturdy units. You want to never count out the dwarfs as they continue to fight on this bridge. Oh, a pretty nice flame spell coming off there. I imagine from one of the... One of the dwarven, ma dwarven runesmiths maybe have access to that spell? I'm not sure. Belagor is surrounded, but I imagine his HP is going down very, very quickly. Yeah, Belagor is going to be getting killed. That's going to be really, really dangerous for the dwarves. Also, their missiles are pretty low on ammunition as well. We do have Varun and the Gajan coming down, which is really, really big. But I, just, I feel like the dwarves just don't have enough left. They obviously have a pretty strong force over here still remaining. But everywhere else is not looking too great if we get rid of that as well. We can continue to see that Azag is just cleaning up the rest of these guys. However, is a unit of Slayers here? I imagine the unit of Slayers is going to be doing pretty okay. However, I, don't, I think they're just too ill-supported. They don't have enough infantry there helping them out. And Azag and his widened body are going to continue just to destroy these Slayers. Realistically, what the Dwarfs needed to do was maybe even just fall back here. They're sending over as many. Their entire army is on its way, but I'm not sure if this is enough right now. It really doesn't look like too much. I think the Orcs are going to take over the Thunder Falls in this battle. But I mean, again, never count the Dwarfs out. They are rallying past this bridge and surrounding. Belagar is going to survive. He popped his mighty oath stone, making him unbreak. Oh no, it didn't make him unbreakable. Just made him really good at defending. The Ruinsmith is still here. If these guys can rally forward, maybe take out a few of these guys, get over here. I and mean, we do have the flame cannons as well from the gyrocopters coming down onto the Wyvern. They can kill the Wyvern, maybe. They might stand a chance. Advanced power does not look good though. However, the gyrocopters are going to be getting smashed. It's going to be awesome to see the dragons actually shooting out fire in Warhammer 2 from like aerial attacks. Oh, sorry about that. For some reason, it just like crashed, like almost crashed on me. I was like, no, not crashing. But luckily, we did, it didn't. So we're, we're all good. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So from what I, from what I gather, the the dragon aerial attacks are going to be like um like a click ability so you I, I imagine you'll get a certain amount of charges of it and you basically just you know much like you would a a spell that's how you'd cast it 
And obviously a good way to counter dragons as well is just kill all the infantry units because once in Warhammer, when all the infantry units are killed, the air units have to ground. Just to make the game a bit more balanced. Because it'll be fun to see how the dragons work. I mean, all of Warhammer 2 stuff, it's been really interesting to see how that balances out overall. If anyone's interested for my Warhammer 2 plans, I plan to do a campaign video a day and an online battle uh, a day for like the first week or so. And I also plan to do two campaigns in Warhammer. I plan to do a Lizard Man campaign on the initial release, and then I'm going to do a High Elf campaign when they add in the grand campaign of stitching together Warhammer 1 and 2. So I think that would be really, really cool. Whenever I think that would be like a couple weeks after release, maybe two weeks, maybe a month or so. So that should give me a good time to get in, stuck into Warhammer 2, get a good idea. And then we're going to go back in and just take a look at the overall campaign of uh, you know, of the Warhammer 1 and 2. The old world meets new. The dwarves still do have a you know somewhat strong forces. However, having these mountain ogres still alive. Oh god, these iron drakes do not stand a chance. Look at that. They're just all getting sent flying. So many of them are killed there on that charge. Yeah, look at them. And the rest of the dwarves here are just fighting bravely. Their allies are trying their best to make their way over. I believe they're just way too far off here. They are really, really far off. And the rest of the orcs are just going to continue to wrap up the kills on these guys. Routing them. The Wyvern is having an awesome day of it. Slaughtering these guys. I think that's going to be it for the Dwarven forces. They're going to be pushing back right here. Yeah, they are routing. And then all it has to be is the Orcs to kind of turn around and make their way over to the last forces. But these still have some reinforcements. They obviously have this unit of, uh, of, of Goblobber. Oh, this is just artillery crew right there. So they're not really anything. We also have some flame cannons making their way back as well. And the Dwarves are just going to be pushing forward to try and meet these guys. As we have the last kind of remnants of this Royal Guard being thrown back into the abyss yeah these guys are running for their lives seem to be routed fully one would imagine as the rest of the forces do so the yorks now have a clear advantage and it does look pretty good for them so we will just speed it up until they do get up to this final last charge we just need to turn everything around i mean having these giant ogres right there are just huge but how many generals are left for the yorks they have one two generals so they have azag on a mount they also have Skarsnik, or who what was this general it wasn't Skarsnik, was it? Because Skarsnik was over there. Oh, yeah, Warzog uh, down here as well. So we have Azag and Warzog. Oh, he's on a boar as well. But putting Warzog on a boar is no fun because he doesn't dance. So these guys are just going to be turning around. Are they, are they, just, are they literally just going to rout or the dwarfs hiding? No, the dwarfs are literally just going to rout. What the hell? They're literally not even going to engage. They have a Fane left. Is it because the Fane is, like, unbreakable, maybe? Oh yeah, it's a Demon Slayer. So they're just going to come over and kill this Demon Slayer. Wow, I can't believe all the dwarfs just routed. You absolute cowards. Look at them just running through the, the forest right now. This is a cool looking forest as well. Very much like the look of that. The Demon Slayer is just going to be dueling and everyone. Literally, the Orc army probably just selected all and just told it to right click here. Demon Slayer versus a Night Goblin Shaman. I imagine the... the the uh, Demon Slayer isn't really doing that good. However, he is about to be surrounded and clustered and destroyed. So first off, a massive thank you to the guys who sent this battle in. I do really appreciate the Discord when they play these battles and send them in. It really helps me gather up content. I'm also looking for Third Age Total War battles as well. So if you guys have any Third Age Total War battles, then please do send them in to my email address down below with a little description of what happened in the battle, what factions, and maybe what money or something along the lines. That would be great. So if we look at the kills, we can see that the artillery really coming up massive for both sides. If you look, I want to see all the, yeah, all the artillery in this engagement did so well. Almost all getting over 100 kills. Really, really nice there. And then we also look at the Dwarven artillery as well doing amazing. Any infantry really going in during this battle? I mean, all the infantry did good. No one doing spectacular though on either side, I don't think. No one really hitting up the 200 mark unless I have missed one of them yeah no i'm really doing that great we've got some uh, some pretty orc legends there getting 104 kills which is cool but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle if you did please do make sure to drop a like and a comment on the video and i'll see you guys next time and fish out